Calamity, Deanna, Homemaker, Homesteader, Homeschool Mom of Six, here continuing my series of cooking through the Betty Crocker cookbook uh, from 1950, the Betty Crocker picture cookbook. We're still on easy confections for children. Today I'm going to be making molasses patties and they say like caramel corn. I am a little um, skeptical, skeptical of whether this molasses brown sugar syrup that I will boil and mix with Cheerios and peanuts will really taste like caramel corn. So I'm a little skeptical. Uh, I've never made this before, uh, but we're about to find out. So the first thing I'm supposed to do is put Cheerios and peanuts into a large greased bowl, uh, which I haven't greased yet. I'm gonna use butter for the greasing. Um, I prefer to use that over shortening, and I usually just use a paper towel, or um, sometimes I use a baggie, and I just put it over my fingers and then uh, rub it around, grease the bowl. And then when I stir it, it says to use a greased spoon, so I'm just going to grease the spoon while I'm at it and leave it sitting in here with the peanuts and Cheerios. Okay. So I've got my greased bowl. I'm supposed to do four cups of Cheerios. Mix in here. And one and a half cups of peanuts I've already measured. Um, it says salted peanuts. I'm using dry roasted peanuts that are lightly salted. Put those in there. And I'll just mix it a little. We'll set that aside. And now um, I'll make the molasses mixture. So into a saucepan, I am supposed to put one and a half cups brown sugar. You always want to pack your brown sugar firmly. So this is a half a cup. Another half a cup is one cup. one and a half cups and then we're also supposed to put in there uh, half a cup of water and three quarter cup of light molasses um, you know what? I'm going to grease this just a little tip if you um, ever measuring like honey or syrup or molasses if the cup is greased it will slide right out. So I'm going to measure three quarter cup. This says mild flavor. I didn't actually see where it said light or dark, but there was the um, black strap, you know, which is extra dark. And then this said mild flavor. So I just went with that. It didn't say light, but it said mild. So I was hoping that was the same thing. And it's always good to measure your liquids at eye level
be clear there's a cup. And then four teaspoons of vinegar. I'm just using the organic apple cider vinegar. That's what I have in my cupboard. I'm sure you could use any vinegar. You could just use regular white vinegar. This says vinegar. I don't think it'll make a difference in the finished product. Um, most vinegar that you buy at the store, well, all of them, as far as I know, um, are standardized to 5% acidity. And with all the sugar and molasses, I'm sure you're not going to get any flavor difference depending on the variety of vinegar you use. So you can just use what's in your cabinet. Um, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. This is cream of tartar. And so an eighth of a teaspoon of this. And then. Says, cook over low heat, stirring occasionally to 250 degrees. So I'm gonna put this on the burner. It says low, so I think I'm gonna put it on in between two and four. Stir it up here. It'll probably take a while to get to 250 degrees. Right now it's at seventy degrees, so we have a ways to go. So I'll read to you. Um, so I have read through storing food and food equivalents, food substitutions. Um, special terms, how to measure, uh, in my previous videos. And now we're on to uh, how to prepare. So it has several pages of how to prepare different foods, but I don't think reading that out loud would uh, be very useful um, without the pictures and stuff like that. And I'm sure a lot of these techniques will actually be used in the recipes, so um, we'll just see how to prepare different foods at another time. So what I am gonna start with then is good nutrition brings double happiness. So this is your nutrition advice from 1950. So this nutrition advice, like I said, from 1950, not necessarily uh, what is recommended today and not necessarily what I'm recommending. I'm just sharing this cookbook with you um, just for fun. Some of the things they say are interesting. Some of it is funny. Um, so I'm gonna read this section on nutrition. First of all, good eating brings happiness in two ways. First, there is the joy and satisfaction of eating delicious, well-prepared food. Then there's the buoyant health, vitality, and joy of living that comes from a wise choice of foods. Both are important to good nutrition. Be sure these basic seven food groups appear on your table daily to fill in the circle of good nutrition. Group one, green and yellow vegetables, some raw, some cooked, frozen, or canned, one serving a day. Group two, oranges, tomatoes, grapefruit, or raw cabbage or salad greens, one serving a day. Group three, potatoes and other vegetables and fruits, raw, dried, cooked, frozen, or canned, two or more servings a day. So they have, they want you to have a minimum of four servings of fruits and vegetables a day, so that's not bad. 
Group four, milk and milk products. Fluid, evaporated, dried milk, or cheese. One and a half pints to one quart milk a day for each child. A quart a day for a nursing mother and a pint a day for all others. Okay, group five, meat, poultry, fish, or eggs, or dried beans, peas, nuts, and peanut butter, three or four eggs each week. Have one serving of meat, poultry, or fish each day. Occasionally dried beans or peas can be served instead. Group six, bread, flours, and cereals, natural whole grain or enriched or restored, three or more servings a day. Group seven, butter and fortified margarine. There's no recommendation for amount on that. Okay, if supplies are limited or unattainable for you, you can still give your family an adequate diet when you learn how to use the basic seven. Protein. Protein builds and repairs body tissue. When we eat more protein than our bodies need, it becomes a source of calories. There are two kinds of protein, complete and incomplete. About half our needs should be provided by eggs, meat, fish, poultry, milk, and cheese. The rest are obtained from cereal products and vegetables. Carbohydrates and fats. Sugars, starches, supply our bodies with heat and energy. We measure the energy value of food in calories. These elements, chief source of calories, are called caloric, caloric foods. Fats give more than twice as many calories per gram as carbohydrates. A tablespoon of butter or tea, two tablespoons of sugar, both equal 100 calories. Vitamins and minerals, why we need them, best food sources. Vitamin A helps resist colds to maintain health of mucous membranes and skin. Dark green, leafy, and yellow vegetables like spinach, squash, carrots, etc. Fish, liver oils, fish liver, no. Fish liver oils, liver, whole milk, butter or fortified margarine, and yellow fruits. Vitamin C, absorbic acid, essential for normal body growth and maintenance. Very important for upkeep of bones and teeth. Grapefruit, oranges, lemons, tomatoes, green leafy vegetables, such as cabbage and broccoli and potatoes. Vitamin B1, thiamine. Necessary for nervous system, for proper utilization of carbohydrates and fat, promotes growth in children, stimulates appetite, lean pork and beef, poultry, meat, eggs, enriched bread, enriched flour, restored breakfast cereals, peanuts, green peas, potatoes, dried legumes, some fruits, such as bananas, apples, and citrus. Vitamin D, essential for growth, normal development, and promoting best use of phosphorus and calcium for bones and teeth. Only adequate sources of our vitamin D milk, fish, liver oil, vitamin D concentrate, exposure of body to sun's rays, or other source of ultraviolet light. Calcium and phosphorus. For strength and rigidity of teeth and bones needed in soft tissues too. Milk, green leafy vegetables for calcium, breakfast cereals, meat, eggs, fish for phosphorus. Iron, blood builder, regulates other body functions too. Liver, lean meat, eggs, enriched bread, dried fruit and beans, green vegetables. Iodine, necessary for normal function of thy thyroid. Saltwater, fish, and iodized salt are the sources. Vitamin B2, riboflavin, needed for healthy skin and hair, good digestion, sound nerves. Some sources, oh, they have the same sources as thiamine, which was lean pork and beef, poultry, milk, eggs, enriched bread, enriched flour, restored breakfast cereals, peanuts, green peas, potatoes, dried legumes, some fruits such as bananas, apples, and citrus. And another B vitamin, niacin, chief factor in cure and prevention of pellagra. Deficiency results in poor mental state and poor skin conditions. Has the same sources as thiamine and riboflavin.
see how this is doing. We're up to 170 degrees, so we've gone up 100 degrees. So I'll finish this last page um, on nutrition. Enrichment. Enrichment is one of the most dramatic food contributions of recent years. When surveys revealed that the vitamin B group was alarmingly lacking in our American diet, nutritionists tried to find a way to ensure everyone's getting his daily requirements of these vitamins. Bread and baked goods are our most common foods in all parts of the country. Therefore, it was decided to add these important nutrients to white flour. The chart below shows what advantages enriched flour offers you. Be sure the flour you buy is enriched. They show here unenriched flour and enriched flour. I don't think you can even buy unenriched flour these days. Um, that is white flour. Whole grain flour, I believe, is not enriched because it doesn't need to be, it still has all those vitamins in it. So that's, um, that's what happened. They started refining the flour and then there wasn't any vitamins in it. And then they discovered um, lots of people were coming up with deficiencies. So they take the wheat and they grind it and they refine it, take all the bran and stuff out so it ends up as white flour. And in doing so, they took out all the vitamins. And so then they put vitamins back in by enriching it. So they could have just went back to having whole grain, but um, white flour, nice fluffy white breads and rolls and cakes are hard to resist. So they just put the vitamins back in instead of putting the bran and whatnot back in. So enriched flour has the same protein and the same calories, but almost six times more thiamine and almost three times more niacin and seven times more riboflavin and over three times more iron than unenriched flour. So the basic seven that we talked about, it says the basic seven is easy if you follow this pattern. Oh, it's starting to boil. Which is good, it won't be much longer. Okay, the basic seven is easy if you follow this pattern. Breakfast, for adequate meals, have fruit, cereal, and milk, and bread and butter. For complete or abundant meals, add to that fruit, well, rather have fruit, cereal, and milk, eggs or meat, and bread and butter. So they added eggs or meat. For lunch, for an adequate meal, have a main dish, vegetables, bread and butter, and fruit. For a complete or abundant meal, add to that cakes or cookies or pudding. I'll go for the abundant meal. <laughs> okay, for dinner, for an adequate meal, have meat and potatoes, green or yellow vegetables, salad, raw vegetable, fruit, no, bread and butter and fruit. For a complete or abundant meal, add to that an appetizer or soup uh, and dessert, pie or cake. The same basic pattern should be used for all members of the family. Simply adjust it to meet individual needs of age, work, activity, and special diets. So by adjust, I'm guessing they mean portion sizes, but keep the same uh, varieties of foods. So growing children 1 to 16 years need more food for their size than grown-ups. Serve according to size and age of child. For adolescents, 14 to 20, need more food than at any other time in their lives. A few pounds overweight at this period is an asset for health. Double and triple the serving. Adults, 20 to 100 years old, need food according to size and activity. Women during pregnancy and lactation require additional food for certain elements. Small servings for the inactive, medium for moderately active, and large servings for the very active. So that's the nutrition uh, advice in this cookbook. And I'll check the temperature of this, see how we're doing. 
223. And we're supposed to go, uh, well, the recipe says 250. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I have to adjust for the altitude of where I live. Um, and how you adjust for altitude is you put the thermometer you're going to use and in water and you bring that to a boil. And at sea level, water boils at 212 degrees if your thermometer is accurate. Um, so you put it in boiling water and see what temperature it boils at. And then you adjust the temperature in your recipe accordingly. So when I did the boiling water test with this thermometer, it boiled at 208 degrees, which is four degrees less than 212. So therefore I will heat this mixture to four degrees less than the recipe. So 246 degrees is what we're looking for. probably going to take a few more minutes and then after it gets to that I'm supposed to add one and a half teaspoons of baking soda which I have in here and um, it says um, it becomes fluffy and porous when you add the baking soda so I'm sure the baking soda is going to react with the acid from the vinegar and if you've ever done like the volcano experiment, um, you know, it's going to bubble. Um, hopefully in these amounts, of course, it's not going to totally bubble over my pan or anything. And then we'll add that to the Cheerios and peanuts. We still got 20 degrees to go. So I'll take a little break and then come back when we're close. Okay, we're actually, we actually got up to 148, so I'm gonna take this off. Now I'm gonna mix in the baking soda. Um, I actually am a little worried about what I said, like whoosh, hope it doesn't go all over the place. Hope my pan is big enough. So let's see, I'm supposed to put one and a half teaspoons in. I think I'm just gonna do a half at a time. See what happens. Okay, I think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna put the other two halves in. It's definitely growing. I'll show you here in a second. Can you see how it's getting fluffy? So now I'm supposed to put it in here. Hmm. Let me get a rubber scraper. So I'll mix that up real good with the peanuts and Cheerios. Cheerios or Kicks. Um, my kid requested Cheerios. So last time, the last recipe I made that called for Cheerios or Kicks, I used Kicks. So this time it was requested for me to use Cheerios.
getting quite thick already. It's starting to cool it slightly until um, it starts to get thick. And then I'm supposed to make it into patties on a cookie sheet with greased hands. But it's getting pretty thick. I'm not sure how long I should wait. But I'm also worried about it burning my hands. I might be able to touch it. I'm going to give it a try. So I'm going to grease my hands. i got some butter here. So this will be fun. Grease my hands up. So they won't stick to this, I guess. And then, oh, I need my cookie sheet. It is greased. Actually, I took the modern day shortcut and I sprayed it with pan spray. So the greasing of the cookie sheet is not authentic. So it says to just make it into patties and let it cool. I wonder how big. That might be kind of a big serving. I'll make smaller ones. A little warm, but not bad. To re grease my hands, it's starting to stick. Pretty sticky stuff. So, what do you think? Do you think these are going to taste like caramel corn? There's more than I can put on this cookie sheet. Maybe like Cracker Jacks? It's got the peanuts and everything. This recipe makes a lot. A little hot in the center of the bowl. It'll stick to the edges.
to make some more room here on my tray. It's really starting to stick to my hands because I am out of butter for greasing my hands. I'm going to have to get a little bit more. Okay, carrying on. I should have got another pan while I was doing that. I need to work fast with these. It's getting stuck to the bowl now, too. Squeeze a few more on here. Only got a couple left. I think. Maybe three. That's it. Those are my molasses patties. I'm going to try one and see if it tastes like caramel corn. It actually does remind me of Cracker Jacks. today I gotta wash my hands so I'm not gonna pick up my cookbook but this is the molasses patties from the 1950s Betty Crocker picture cookbook confections for children and I'm super excited because that was the last recipe on the first page that I've done so we get to turn the page next week and it'll be fudge I know not everybody likes fudge I love fudge. I definitely have a sweet tooth. So I'll be making fudge next week from the Betty Crocker cookbook from 1950. Subscribe if you like this video and want to follow my journey through the Betty Crocker 1950s cookbook. Thank you for watching.